Hey everybody, call me Felix. I'm back in Poway, not just to see the San Augustine Church. We are going back to the Smoke Restaurant. If you remember my past video, we were here to chow down on some American barbecue. But Chris has a lot more than just American barbecue. He has pastas and pizzas and cheesecake. And given how impressed we were with the American barbecue portion of the smoke menu, we've decided to come back and cover the other half of it. So, join us as we pig out yet again at Smoke Restaurant. Alright, so I did tell you in the last video we were here covering uh, Chris's sm Smoke Restaurant in Poway that I would tell you more about the San Augustine Church. And this church was built in 1710, uh, or started construction in 1710. And this is what you would call an earthquake Baroque church. Prominent feature of this church is the buttresses on each side. So this is meant to withstand some major earthquakes. Now, that didn't stop it from uh, incurring damage back in 1865 and in 1885. And the bell tower here dates back to about 1795 in construction of the church. And it is also designed such that it's kind of apart from the church is not real and not incorporated into the actual building and you'll notice on these on the sides the buttresses kind of have like a javanese um, as in um indonesia java indonesia design cues so you have some really interesting patterns here and the neat thing about this church too is like like the one i saw in bantayan island in cebu is that it has a mixture of coral stones, as in coral from the sea, that has been incorporated with um, br a brick foundation, a brick layer. So you'll notice that in the restoration, that kind of made this more alabaster looking, that there's quite a bit of bricks, like in the first, like the third of this um, facade of the building. And then the other parts are coral that have been embedded into especially in the top uh, half of the church and like I mentioned I was here in December 2019 when they were just restoring this church one major purpose of it was to get rid of all that intrusive vegetation that was harming the structure and on top of it being more alabaster like um, I'm kind of in the minority that it looks better in the original grays, but, you know, little by little, it is returning. So we are here in September of 2020. Um, this final restoration was done in July or August of 2020. So it's slowly creeping back. And it's an absolutely stunning design and definitely worth visiting and definitely worth its designation as a historical Baroque church and as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And now that I have satisfied your curiosity about the San Augustine Church in Poway, it's time to go eat. And this time, this is our pizza and pasta episode. Is it good? No, it's good, right? Yeah, we're good, we're good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. I don't care if I'm breaking copyright, people, but it's the start of the Burr months here. It's early September and it's Christmas. So I'm going to honor that Philippine tradition and just play some of this. And this is the signature Laing pizza, but I got mine with longanisa on top. Now, I don't know if I'm getting the full on effect of the Laing. I'm curious to see. So across the corner, you can get pinakbet pizza. Well, you can have another Filipino specialty on a pizza. And this is Laing pizza, which is um, some stewed taro leaves. And you can smell it smells a little bit smoky. They're really not. And then there are even little pepperoncini in here. So there's a little spice that comes from that too. And there's also some hot sauce. And Chris makes them, these himself as well. And thank Dad wants to do the honors. Break off. <laughs> oh, you want to verify that this pizza is really lying, huh? <laughs> They're lying, lying. They're not lying. They're not lying. It's lying. Well, that's what you get for even um, doubting that it's lying. Yeah.
Okay. Look at that. Lots of longanisa and look at that cheese. Now, let me just say, it's hard to get good cheese in Ilocos. So, I think there's some queso cuti there. I think there's some mozzarella as well. Real mozzarella. Here. You don't eat pizza with a fork generally. So I'm just gonna eat this. You can't even do this New York style because it's not big enough. So, here you go. Hmm. There's no lying that is lying, like I have said. <laughs> yeah, it does taste like lying. And it's, first of all, the crust is really nice. It's um, not too thin. It's a bit airy. That's really good. And of course, I welcome lots and lots of cheese. Now that lying is definitely light. It's definitely true lying. Um, and even right now, after I've eaten that one bite, even after I've eaten one bite, you get the nice smoky lying taste that just persists. Even though you have some longanisa and some pepperoncini, the pepperoncini gives a slight zing. And of course, the longanisa is quite nice. It's really good, isn't it? It really works for the pizza. It pairs unbelievably well with the pizza. It does. Yeah. It just has a nice smoky tea, smoke tea leaf flavor, taro leaf flavor. And it persists throughout too, so there's definitely lying, true lying. Instead of rice, you get this nice flaky, airy crust, and it, you can see Nice air bubbles in there too. It is really good. By the way, these pizzas are 12 inches. So if you're an American like me, with an American sized appetite, I think you should order a few of these. I'll say that much. Maybe I'll even get one, one more, just to make sure. We do have three other pizzas on the way though. But two of one kind and um, one of another. Stay tuned. I mean, I've tried this next pizza slice with some uh, custom ceiling labuyo sauce. So this is a traditional laing. And of course you have to have some ceiling labuyo. So naturally you need the sauce. Come on you. I think we'll be liberal with this. There we go. I think. Mm-hmm. Dad says it's really good. <laughs> He was, he was like lying pizza. So there you go. We've already verified from dad that lying also belongs on pizza. We've yet to do a pinak bet, but once we get, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. There's even up here, because Ilocos also does novelty, other novelty pizzas. Pinak bet on pizza. They also have dinuguan on pizza. Yeah. There we go. The longanisa, to me, is like, it's, it's smoked as it says. This reminds me of like Italian sausage, but without like the anise or the pepper and such. Oh, get that. Look how cheesy that pizza slice is. And the cheese is the real deal too. It, real deal mozzarella. And it's not sweet. No, it's not sweet. <laughs> Because in these parts, you only get a den cheese, for example, like that processed stuff. Yeah. But this is the real deal in cheese. And you need... And it's stringy. Look at that. And it's stringy. Yeah. It kind of looks like pesto in a way, but you know what? It, it kind of lingers more. Okay, I think I'm going to get busted for like Blink-182 playing in the background. So I'm going to shut this up and enjoy the rest of this. But that sauce is really dynamite too. Seedling Labuyo sauce. It's an authentic... Filipino flavor to that. And here's some margarita pizza. Um, it kind of reminds me, to be honest, of like those Wolfgang Puck four cheese pizzas that they used to sell at like Costco back in the day. But um, yeah, that's what it really reminds me of as far as aesthetically, because you know, when you think of margarita, you think of um, lots of ricotta cheese and um, and some lots of basil, but the basil looks like it's baked in. 
Dad's like, um, just, just eat it, please. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. It's like zip lining from pizza from the pizza slice to my plate. Here's our margarita. Let's give that a try. String cheese. I mean, we're almost forgiven that maybe Chris just put string cheese in here and call it mozzarella. <laughs> It's also really good. A beautiful basil flavor too. You call it contrast, of course, when you're thinking of traditional, traditional pizza ingredients with, with lying on pizza. You have quite a juxtaposition on the same plate. Um, that basil really shines nicely. Um, this one has a little more tomato, like. Um, flavor that I remember out of margarita <laughs> but it's also like nice and that tomato is not too tart just about the right kind of sweetness so let's 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 remind our Filipino viewers here in the Philippines this is what real, real tomatoes taste like without the dang sugar and banana ketchup okay they're meant to be a little more neutral tasting slightly a little tart a little sweet, but juicy. That's how it goes. And now, of course, I like the charring on the crust too. Beautiful texture. And I love basil, or basil for you Brits. And this is the smoke special pizza with everything on it. And when they say everything on it, it means everything of meat in there. So this is, you know what I usually think of when they say special pizza, they also mean like putting some peppers and onions and such. No, that's just more meat. Bacon, longanisa, pepperoni maybe, I don't know, but there's a lot of sausage on top and lots of bacon, oh my goodness. It's like meat lovers pizza back home, but with a nice crispy, thin, flaky crust. And one thing I really love about it too, because of the rather thin composition of the pizza dough, it doesn't taste greasy. Usually if you put lots of meat on pizza, especially pepperoni, there's just so much grease on top, but there's none of that here. It's just the meat flavor and the cheese. It's really hard to get really good pizza. So this is a revelation, people. So if you live around these parts, especially in the Nokos region, I would say the pizza right now, really, really top notch. And I'll tell you now too, this is rather light. You can eat a bunch of slices of this. And we gotta try the fresh made pasta after this. Um, I made some buffalo wings. So, back, real buffalo wings, Philippines. Real buffalo wings. Not the stuff that pretends that it is and it's got nothing in it, but like, um, neutral tasting red sauce that doesn't really, it's like the stuff that you put on your mangi nasal rice. It's like that weak. But this is gonna show you some real buffalo wings. Back in a bit. Now, would you believe it? We finished all that pizza. Well, except for that. And the one I'm gonna finish here for sure. So, we have this fun little game. Whoever finishes first has to pay. So, either one of these young bucks is gonna pay. Oh, Angelo. And so, I decided to get some dessert later just to eat it in front of him, just to rub it in on top of how much he sucks at eating. And. <laughs> um, here is our pasta carbonara with pancetta. Fresh made pasta. Ooh, look at that. Let's twirl this around, shall we? It seems to go on forever like the cheese. Mm. Oh, why not? Let me get some of that pancetta. Yes. One more for good measure. And I want to say again, this is house-made pancetta. This isn't stuff that you get at like the carbonara at Shakey's and, sh and stuff like that. So, yeah, again, this is real carbonara. Well, I haven't tasted it yet to tell you that it is. There you go. Down the hatch. Angelo heard that we, he, he's gonna pay. 
So he's going to attack the mountain of noodles. And one thing, <laughs> and you know, Filipinos love pasta carbonara. I mean, you see it almost everywhere. But one thing I love about the noodles is you definitely are fresh made. They have a little chew to them. You gotta remember, real carbonara is also made with like a little bit of like a uh, raw egg to bind everything together in the cream. In the pancetta, even though you don't get bites of it, they serve to suffuse the noodles too. So, with that salty pork flavor. Let's try, try that out, just if it's salt. Mmm. There's like a slight bit of crispness too to that pork. And it's fresh. Like it just got a nice smoke, smoke saltiness too. Smoke saltiness almost has like a nutty flavor with that. I love this carbonara too. <clears throat> carbonara spark appetite. So I love me. Filipinos love carbonara. I've, I've just proved it right there. But they don't love the pancetta because there's a lot of it left over. And that is for me, homeboy. Ooh. Holy shnikes. Now, our buffalo wings have arrived too. And I ordered a dozen because we had to try them. And real buffalo wings. Philippine, and the Philippines, they love buffalo wings here too. But you know, they don't taste like buffalo wings back home. That's a dozen wings. That looks pretty big from where I'm sitting and where the camera is concerned too. Oh, look at that. Oh, that salty pork. Freshly made, in-house, in-cured as well. Everything okay? More than okay. How was the, how was the carbonara? Did I do okay? Good. Yes, good. really good. Really good. It's got like... Is this what you wanted? Yeah. This is Polish salami. Polish salami. Polish salami, yeah. So it's, it's cured and dried, but it's not... um. It's not, uh, it, it's not fermented, so it's not, doesn't, you taste it. Yeah, it's got the flavor, but it doesn't have that tangy kind of. Yeah. yeah I like that, the non-tangy, that flavor. So you want me to, you want, you want this? Yes, I like it. Okay, so you want it now, or do you want me to vacuum seal it and put it in the bag for you? Yeah, that's it. Oh. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Also, you can order some bacon from the Let's add some more of that pancetta. The pancetta to me, even, even, I mean, I don't know if it's my taste buds that are fooling me, but it has a lechon kowali type texture where then when you bite into it perfectly, it, it just dissipates nicely. And that, the, the cure that in that pancetta just releases. I must say, this is a really great carbonara. Jake, please try the buffalo wings. What do you think? Okay, that's all you need to know. That face. The spooky roll of the eyes face is all you need to know. Okay. From my ham here, I can tell this is really crisp. I'm just gonna dump this in that. Swirl it around in that buffalo sauce. Now, I asked Chris, what type of buffalo sauce do you use? Because I know you cannot get Frank's Red Hot like you can in a lot of joints in Buffalo, New York. So they had to house make this as well. And he kind of experimented and experimented with a sauce that he wound up liking. So let's give this a try. House made buffalo wings with house made sauce. He nailed it. He nailed the taste. So here's how I know. Off the top of the bat, you almost get like that paprika, pepper, acidity. That's signature with any buffalo wings back home. So even before, even just like biting into it, it absolutely nails the buffalo sauce. Damn. That's how you make <laughs> buffalo wings. Nicely fried too. From that nice crisp skin. And of course, the way that these are made is that you toss them, you know, you fry them up without the sauce and you just toss them around and such. But yeah, it is tangy. It's got a little spice to it. Not enough, not a lot, whole lot, but this place, I'll tell you now, bare, 
be buyer beware if you get the really spicy wings. Because they're made with ghost peppers and there's even Carolina Reaper wings. Oh yeah, yummy, huh? Yummy in your tummy, but then the next morning, uh-oh. Add some beer. Yeah, wings and beer and pizza. Can you think of a better combination? And with this view, I mean, that's what reminds you you're in the Philippines rather than America right now. This is the drying chamber. So this is Salami Milano. Mm -hmm. um, and this is beneficial mold. That mold is beautiful. What yes. I want is I want the whole thing to be covered in it, but it won't because mm -hmm. I'm not using a mold culture. Behind there is the pepperoni. This is Soprosetta Calabrese. Mm -hmm. And then Spanish chorizo behind it. Mm -hmm. This is the guanciale on top. Then over here, come this way, sir. Pancetta. Oh my. And then that's the Polish salami mm -hmm. that, he, uh, that, he, that you guys tried. Yeah. And that's more of the pancetta. That's the pancetta that you guys had for your carbonara. Ooh. Amazing. That was pretty good, yeah? Mm -hmm. So what were you saying? It needed a little bit more salt? No. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is another batch of salami that's fermented. Mm -hmm. Smell that? Yeah. I, there's a big hint of it when you get in. So this will stay in here. So we made this yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it'll ferment in here for about 72 hours. We're looking for a specific pH, so we bring the pH level up. Right. Um, these are what I use to test the pH, so mm -hmm. leftover meat. Um, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to be good. We <laughs> use this to test the pH, and then I use this to test the salami, too. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's the whole thing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so once this gets to the target pH around 5.2, mm -hmm. um, then we move it into the drying chamber. And there it stays for three to four months until it reaches the right weight. Ooh. All right. And of course, after finishing a light lunch, this is naturally what you see on your way out. Have a light-hearted lunch, huh? That line pizza was really a surprise. I think perhaps the dish of the meal. And the other, the other couple of pizzas, the margarita and the smoked pizza, the special pizza with all tons of meat over there, also good. Um, that carbonara is like real carbonara because you use, again, raw egg. That pancetta, house cured. Absolutely, like burst in your mouth. Exactly. Deliciousness. Mm -hmm. Yum. Just imagine lechon kowali with the meat that has that special cure, and it just unleashes that that exactly. cure, the flavor. That's it. That's exactly. That's exactly how you want a carbonara, not too like milky, creamy. It just has that wonderful saltiness from the pancetta that filters through as well, and that um, the buffalo wings are legit buffalo wings. So. Come out to smoke if you can, as in smoke restaurant. And um, if you liked this video, um, give me a thumbs up. Better yet, subscribe. And uh, see you in the next video. Empire never ended.